A couple of short videos recently went viral on Twitter, as short videos tend to do. They depict fictional video game environments generated using Midjourney. I'm not sure what tool was used to turn them into video, but the final product is, thoughts about AI aside, it's genuinely breathtaking. It combines late 90s PC game aesthetics with an incredibly competent understanding of depth. Made a lot of people feel a lot of things, the most noteworthy being a flavor of dread. Mostly due to the sheer uh, sense of scale that they evoke. The negative responses to these videos fit snugly into one of three categories. Some people insist that since these videos are generated by AI, that there's nothing to be seen here of value. The second response that's been coming from a lot of indie developers um, is that they're insisting the game looks exactly like whatever project they're currently working on. But, yeah, none of these projects evoke the same emotion. The third type of response is that this isn't possible. What's happening on the video? Uh, developers are pointing out the flaws and they're pointing out inconsistencies, such as uh, the way that things in the distance are working in, you know, versus things happening in the foreground. Now, what they don't understand, which is crazy to me, is that indie developers strive to do the impossible every single day. We cannot stand when a computer tells us no. We like doing whatever we want, whenever we want, on whatever device we want to do it on, which smoothly transitions into the point of this video. I was at a company lake party yesterday. We got on a boat with margaritas and moseyed around a lake for about half an hour while the fish was being fried. About two margaritas in, I made a fascinating observation. Have you ever seen something very large from very far away? The first time I noticed this phenomenon was when I went to go visit the Grand Canyon, but the most recent time was when I was on that boat looking at the trees in the distance. Well, our eyes are fantastic at depth perception to a certain point, but then past that point, very large objects tend to look flat. You could probably observe this phenomenon by looking at the moon. It doesn't really look like a sphere, it sort of looks like a disk. This is because our brain creates a composite of the two images each eye produces and then marks up the delta between them as distance information. If they're dissimilar, then the object is close. If they're similar, then the object is far away. However, flat objects and far away objects tend to look the same. What's happening in this video has been written off by a lot of people as billboarding, uh, which is traditionally pretty limited in 3D games, uh, such as in the Sega Jurassic Park arcade game, where you essentially railroaded the entire time. And it has similar, but not quite the same, vibes. What I'm going to suggest is that I think a good portion of what this video is doing can be accomplished using Death of Field. Now, your eyes don't work like a screen does, with hard, fixed limits. Instead, your vision peters off a little more like a gradient, with the most detail and color in the center, and then gradually the detail and color become less detailed the farther you get towards your peripheral vision. Obviously, this has been an issue that filmmakers and game designers have been trying to work around for ages. Filmmakers have it a little easier, and they can get away with lenses that properly depict the center of your vision. Uh, this is because, obviously, they control what you see. In fact, a common film technique that plays with focal length is the dolly zoom, where if you'll notice, a subject stays in place with the world around them change as the lens is adjusted. However, video games, in particular 3D open world games, need to give you, the player, a lot of information so that you can make sense about what's going on. This means that the lens is usually pulled way back, uh, which has the negative effect of making everything on screen look like a miniature. Even games like Breath of the Wild struggle with this, and compensate with really big mountains. But if you notice, most video games have a focal length that makes the world look like a miniature. It's not unusual for your character to look 10 inches tall. Now what the AI video is doing is fascinating. It's trained on both filmic and video game footage, and so it's essentially extrapolated the camera logic of film onto a 90s PC game aesthetic. And it seems like reading through all these comments, I'm the first one to have figured that out. I put together a really, really crappy Unity demo, uh, and I'm gonna use it to show you what I mean. So I put together um, a very short demo in Unity. It only took me about an hour to put this together, um, but you can sort of see what I did. I built a terrain, I added a bunch of tree models, um, I put some filters on top, and then I have this giant mountain in the background. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to demonstrate what the typical camera settings look like and what the atypical camera settings look like. Uh, so one thing that we're going to do is we're going to turn this down and I'm going to turn the field of view way up. 
So you'll notice most video games tend to have an environment that looks kind of like this. And the reason is obvious. You're able to see these trees on the side, you're able to see your full walkway, you're able to see the mountain off there in the distance. Um, and then I'll take the camera holder and I'll move a little bit. You'll notice that it doesn't look super realistic, but you know what? That's not what's important. What's important is that we're able to see everything on the screen and make decisions appropriately. Uh, as a quick aside, you'll notice I don't need a billboard for a lot of these trees. These are actually full 3D models. I just, uh, I put a bunch of shaders on top um, and I've got the lighting set up in a certain way so that it's not directly obvious. But yeah, there's, aside from the grass, no billboarding going off in this at all. There we go. Go away. Turn this way down. The mountain is substantially larger. Uh, even when I turn it up kind of like this, uh, I can move the camera holder. And you'll notice that the mountain doesn't seem to move as much as it did earlier. Kind of crazy. Uh, I'm gonna look up a little bit. It kind of gives you a sense of scale. It's exactly what I was saying earlier. If you want things to look and feel bigger despite changing the distance, camera focal settings are absolutely everything. Let's rotate the camera a little bit. So you can kind of look around. It's gonna. That's interesting. There we go. So I can still look around at a 3D environment. I really wish I had something in front to kind of show you. Uh, by the way, if you notice, that's not the sky, that's the mountain. But in order to get a character going on a setting like this, uh, my camera is actually significantly farther back than it looks, simply because of the way that the uh, focal lengths work. So, I mean, essentially, you could get something working like the demo in the video if you just uh, wrote a script that hid everything in between your camera and your player, and you pulled the camera way, 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 way back, and then you set up the focal length so that everything far away looked absolutely humongous. But, uh, yeah, that's just my two cents. Anyway, this situation bothered me enough that I wanted to make an entire video about it. If you like what you've seen, I swear I am alive and I continue to make videos from time to time. I actually have something of an announcement to make soon, uh, so y'all might want to stay tuned in for that. But with that said, hope y'all have a great day. Peace.